Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for Bluegrass Home and Garden TV. Art Hubbard with Hubbard Mechanical is with us once again. And if you remember last summer, we had Art on. We did a little bit mm -hmm. of summer grilling here on yep. the show. And then you took and did some all throughout the summer yourself. But mm -hmm. we thought we would spend the next several episodes uh, just learning a little bit more about you and the history of your company and how you got into this industry while also getting hopefully a little bit of an expanded menu for our summer grilling. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I got an industry uh, when I was seven to help my dad, uh, just mainly as a time to spend time with him. Uh, and then I just kind of fell in love with it. And I worked for my first contractor when I was 14. Uh, so I got my Kentucky apprenticeship license at 14 and then just kept going from there and, and I just loved it and stuck with it. I know. And another thing you love and you have stuck with is you've created your own little canopy yes. here of everything you might possibly need to cook outdoors and yes. get the heat out of your house during the summer. Yeah, because it, I mean, it, it helps on the load of your house. So Absolutely. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a spatchcock chicken. So a lot of people... It's starting to get some trending with it. A lot of people never heard of it before. I never. Heard I love it. it. It's like it's a way of doing a whole chicken, but getting it cooking evenly, where you don't have the breast drying out, get the thighs done, and everything else. So pretty much what you do, you trim it up, you cut the backbone out, then you hmm. slit the top of the breast plate to allow it to lay flat. Do, so where so where are we cooking this? That one's going to go on the vertical pellet smoker. Okay, so on a yeah. smoker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do it on a grill as well. Um, I like doing both sometimes. Sometimes I'll put it on the smoker and then I'll take it to the grill to finish it off so it has some of that flavor. Okay, well, when we get back, we'll talk about all the spices and mm -hmm. how to do everything you said you're going to do to the, the chicken. Yep, we can do it. <laughs> all right, stay tuned. Thanks for keeping it here on Bluegrass Summer Garden TV. Art is with us now and mm -hmm. spatchcock chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a way, I don't know when it was invented. I've been doing it for the last two years and I kind of really enjoy it. All right, so walk us through. You said we got to do a lot to prepare. You know, yes. prepare this so it does cook evenly. Yes. What we do is, of course, you, you pre-wash it, um, and then you just you trim off a lot of the uh, the fat okay. and the skin and just kind of get it to where it's going to be even and where the tail is. You just trim it up, um, and then you just kind of get to however you like it. I mean, everyone's got personal mm -hmm. preferences. Some people like more skin, less skin. And then this is the hard part, okay. cutting the backbone out. So I don't know what kind of shears those are. These are poultry shears. Okay, so random question. Uh -huh. I have some that I use for eating lobster and like really big like king crab. Do you think they would work? Um, I'd give it a shot, but it might not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, I'm trying not to like go out and have to like buy yeah. any new utensils if I don't have to. Yes, and I will say most of the, the shears are not horribly expensive. Okay. I mean, it's a little bit more than a fast food lunch. So okay. they're not horrible. I, I'm just one of those people, like, I hate having all these specialty gadgets because I feel like I end up just having this drawer of all kinds of gadgets that I don't use very often. So when possible, mm -hmm. I try to multi-purpose. Yes. Yeah, and I get that, but I like tools. So <laughs> kitchen tools are tools to me. So. <laughs> Well, then, well, we should have made you a kitchen tool belt. You know, we you should. We've got a little bit of pockets in your apron We can. Here. We can. <laughs> and then you just kind of go and... After you take the backbone out, the breastplate, you can see the back side of it mm -hmm. right there. You just get your, and make sure your knife's sharp, kind of pierce it until okay. you hear that little snap. Then you get it flat, you grab the breast, flip it over, and there's your spatchcock chicken. All right, so, and then we're going to season it up when we uh -huh. get back. Yep. We'll be back here in just a second. Stay tuned. Thanks for keeping it here. Our Hubbard, Hubbard Mechanical is with us. Spatchcock mm -hmm. chicken. Mm -hmm. We've uh, done our preparation, but now we are going to season it. So what huh? all do you have here? We have brown sugar. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a lemonade type of a, a mix. Right. We got brown sugar, lemonade mix, paprika, lemon pepper, hmm. garlic, onion, and salt. Lemonade mix. Uh-huh. Uh, you can also do uh, like a lemonade chicken instead of beer can chicken. You use a can of lemonade. And if oh. you get one of those and it does the same thing, we, we do that quite often. And it's a kind of a sweet rub. So we kind of we kind of like it and then just kind of get it all over. You know, get as much coverage as you can. 
About how much of these um, did you use each? Uh, they're about a teaspoon and a tablespoon of each, obviously. Okay. Like the, the, I think the garlic and the onion are a teaspoon. Lemonade's a tablespoon. Paprika's a tablespoon. Lemon pepper's a tablespoon. I could be wrong 100% on that, we'll, but we will put it on, on put, our... Put it on your social yeah, media. Okay. We'll, get, we'll definitely get it on our YouTube channel for sure. And one thing that I've noticed when people do any type of a whole chicken that they forget to do... Like the little joints? The backside. Oh, the backside. I was thinking like getting down, mm -hmm. <laughs> getting so down all in there. When you do the backside, it actually cooks and puts the flavor through. Ooh, okay. And so it's more of an even flavor that goes through that. Flip it back over, get your area, and then oh, yeah, don't want to finish it up. That for sure. Okay, so we're just going to keep rubbing that in, mm -hmm. and then you're going to put it directly onto... Right the on the grates of the smoker. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as it's smoking throughout, we I get uh, lemons, cut them in half, and just squeeze lemon juice to make it kind of a citrus flavor. Idea. Mm -hmm. All right, how long typically will this need to cook? If you're going to truly smoke it, like at a 225 to 250 range, it can take an hour and a half to two hours. That's if you're going to do it like at 300 to kind of have it still have a little bit of flavor, but not as long, you can get by with an hour to hour and 15, hour and 30. Uh, biggest thing is make sure it's 165 in the thigh. All right, so if you want it more of an intense flavor, mm -hmm. cook it on the lower temperature. Yeah, if you want more of the smoke flavor, lower, low and slow. Low and slow. All right, yep. we'll be back. We'll let this start cooking. All right, thanks to the uh, power of television, mm -hmm. a lot of time has elapsed, but not for you all. Yes. <laughs> this has been going about how long? It's been going for about two and a half hours. Okay, okay, so, so we check it now? Yes, I, we, we check it, and if it's not where you want, one thing that I do is if I'm in a hurry, humidity comes up, clouds come over, it changes everything, take it, and you can cheat and put it on the on a grill. This is when you know you don't really know much about grilling, smoking, the fact that humidity needs to come into play. Yes, it does. <laughs> that so, would be me right now. <laughs> what we're going to do is just take it off the smoker, take the whole rack and everything. Okay. My, my grill is big enough to handle it, so I'm going right, to put well, it on there. Well, we'll there, go go. there. Let's see how it looks. Mm. Ooh. Looks good. I'm just going to try to cheat it to get a little hotter quicker. Uh, okay, okay. Well, so. We'll let you do that. Smelling good though. Oh. All right, so we'll just uh, keep an eye on that, mm -hmm. check the temperature, and then come back and hopefully just let it rest for a little bit, and then we'll yep, we'll dig in. You can do it. All right, stay tuned. So yeah, humidity, wind. Who knew that that could affect your grilling? But we're mm -hmm. back with Art, who is a what, spatchcock. How do you spell that? It is S P A T C H C O C K. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. Just look weird when I wrote it down. Alrighty. Woo. Looks yummy. Yep. Yum, 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 yum. And the good thing too, when you have the large cutting boards, they act as a great hot pad. <laughs> so, because if that gets ruined instead of your table, a whole lot easier to replace. Oh, absolutely. So, do you, you typically let it rest? I do, yeah. yeah. Anytime I take meat off the grill, I always try to let it rest minimum of 15. If you're going to do a longer smoke, like a brisket or pulled pork, sometimes those things can rest for an hour and a half, two hours. So. I have so much to learn. Yeah. So much to learn. You can all do right. It. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. I'll just keep taking tips from you here and there. I'll just take little pieces of information and tuck them away. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll let that rest. We'll be back here in just a few, and we'll taste it. Well, we are almost out of time here today on Bluegrass Summer Garden TV. Art has been uh, finishing mm -hmm. up the spatchcock chicken, and mm -hmm. we are now uh, hopefully ready to taste. Oh, I'm getting all kinds of like the wind's blowing. Now I'm getting all mm -hmm. the hmm, all the citrus good. flavors that come with it. We'll go ahead and get you a, a wing. Here. I get that and just pop it off. Oh yeah, look at all the juices coming out of there. That good smoke. Okay. Oh, oh, well, right, right, right there. Foul. <laughs> get all that big old bite. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can you taste the lemonade inside of it? All the yeah. powders. Yeah, not like in your face, but like mm -hmm. as you're chewing, it kind of just like comes out mm -hmm. in a little burst. So yep. it's kind of cool. Yep, and just remember whenever you're using a pellet grill, pellet smoker, uh, stick burner, anytime you're smoking, the meat is going to have a pinkish tint to it. Mm. It's not raw. So I've had a lot of people say, you're going to try to feed me raw food. No, I'm really not. It's just smoke, and the, the smoke just changes the color of the meat. All right, well. Where can they get all the details in case they weren't taking notes at home? They can go on our uh, 
Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, and we'll put all the recipes and these little clips and stuff like that. All right, we will see you next time uh -huh. on Bluegrass Home and Garden TV.